Hi, this is Mike Lawless, and in this video, I'm going to describe ionization effects in Gastro Plus. This is tutorial 5.3.4. This next slide is an outline of the talk. Uh, I'm going to use meconazole as an example and first discuss the pKa of meconazole. I'll show a fraction ionized versus pH plot from AdMet Predictor and also discuss the solubility factor. Uh, next, I'll show plots of solubility versus log D, uh, which are made in Gastro Plus. I'll briefly discuss absorption scale factors, and then I'll go into a demonstration of model for uh, meconazole and discuss the dissolution and absorption, and then the uh, effect permeability and solubility has on the fraction absorbed. The solubility and permeability uh, will vary for with pH for compounds with one or more ionizable group. Solubility increases with increasing ionization, whereas passive diffusion permeability decreases with increasing ionization. The pH in the GI tract can vary from 1.7 or less in the stomach to 7.5 or more in the ascendant colon. Proprietary equations are incorporated in the gastro plus to, to calculate the solubility versus pH and log D versus pH plots, and these are used to describe the dissolution and the absorption of the compound along the GI tract. This next slide shows uh, the pKa of meconazole. Uh, it was uh, experimentally measured and reported in a 1999 publication in Pharmaceutical Research where they uh, observe, or obtained a value of 6.12 for the pKa of meconazole. Uh, the AdMet predictor prediction is 6.28, so uh, a pretty nice prediction for that uh, pKa. Uh, both these pKa's are close to what they are in the GI tract, therefore the solubility in the log D uh, will vary in different regions of the GI tract. Uh, if the, uh, and then these two images down here are for meconazole, uh, it's a compound containing four chlorine atoms and two phenyl rings, so it's a fairly hydrophobic compound. Uh, this imidazole ring up here can be protonated, and at pH is below uh, 6.28, uh, most of the compound will be in, in this form. Above that will be in uh, the neutral form. On the right is a distribution of the uh, microstates. Uh, so the y-axis is the fraction ionized, and uh, the x-axis is the pH. Uh, this red line here is for the uh, protonated compound down here, and the blue line is for the uh, neutral form up above. Uh, so if we start at very low pH down here, uh, most of the, or all of the compound is in the protonated form, and then as you increase the pH, uh, to right around uh, uh, 4, uh, this microstate starts uh, decreasing and uh, the other one starts coming up here for the neutral state. Then when you get to the pKa of the compound, uh, 6.28 in this case, uh, these uh, lines cross and as you increase the uh, uh, pH, then the um, neutral state becomes more predominant. The solubility factor is the ratio of the completely ionized form to the completely unionized form. Uh, the predicted solubility factor for meconazole is 1,239, so this represents a large increase in the solubility in going from the neutral form to the cationic form. And of course that's important for uh, dissolution in the stomach. Uh, there's a couple other methods to compute the salt solubility factor. Uh, if you know the uh, solubility of the unionized uh, form, you can just take 20 and divide it by that value. And just here's an example uh, using the intrinsic solubility predicted by AdMet Predictor. Uh, and taking 20 and divided by that, that gives you about 2200 not too far off the predicted solubility. Another way is simply to go into AdMet Predictor and change the um, pH of which the solubility is plotted or is predicted at. Uh, so if you go down to a very low pH where it's going to be predominantly in the ionized form, uh, you get a very high solubility. If you go up above around 8.3 where the compound is unionized, you're going to get a much lower solubility. And so that's a factor of, of 1,000. Uh, so this number here is very close to the uh, predicted solubility. We would typically go with this one uh, in Gastro Plus. Uh, so these are the plots in Gastro Plus, and I'll show these when I uh, demonstrate the software. Uh, but just note that at very low pH, the solubility uh, is high, and then as you increase the pH, uh, you 
you decrease the solubility, whereas the log D goes in the opposite direction. Uh, absorption scale factors are used to uh, uh, change the uh, absorption in the different compartments of the GI tract uh, without uh, uh, inputting different PEF values. Uh, so passive absorption is assumed to be a first order process. Uh, it's time dependent and it's proportional to the permeability uh, times the absorption scale factor. Uh, it's also related to the concentration between uh, or difference between the concentration in the lumen and the concentration in the enterocytes. Uh, scaling the uh, absorption scale factors this way allows you to input a single PEF value uh, that's used in all intestinal compartments and it compensates for ionization effects by adjusting the scale factors instead of the PEF. This next slide shows the absorption scale factors uh, for particular species. So this will be related to uh, this will be dependent upon the physiology of the species that you're looking at, uh, and it depends upon the, the pH in the different compartments, uh, which again would relate to the log D uh, of the compound. So if we look at the absorption scale factors, they're different for all the uh, compartments. Um, the And they're automatically scaled by a model. So we have a model uh, that, that produces different results for the different compartments here, and it's related to log D, uh, but that's not the only um, part of the equation. The density of the villi and the microvilli are also incorporated into the absorption scale factor, and they're related to these numbers over here. I've imported meconazole into a GastroPlus database. I will take a look at the, the log P here is predicted to be 5.81. Uh, we can click on the PKA table and you see that uh, the PKA of 6.28 was imported along with the solubility factor. Uh, this plot is of the uh, solubility versus uh, pH as I showed in the slides. Uh, you can also change this to a, a log plot and you see here from a, a little below 4 down to around, um, around 7, 6 the solubility decreases as you're increasing the pH. Uh, for the log D, uh, the value increases as you're increasing the pH through here. I'm going to use a 500 uh, milligram tablet, so I'll specify 500. And you'll note that the dose number uh, in increased due to the increase in the number of milligrams here. Uh, here's the predicted solubility. It was 0.009 as I showed in the slides is in gastro plus you get a little bit more um, accuracy or a few more uh, decimal digits. Uh, the PEF is 9.8 which is fairly high and that gives it a green uh, light as far as the absorption number so this would be a low solubility um, high permeability or class 2 BCS compound. Uh, we'll go into the pharmacokinetics tab and I'm going to put the observed uh, uh, clearance of 0 0.65 liters per hour per kilogram and then we'll just go in and do a uh, simulation. So after 24 hours the simulation is finished and you see that you have very high uh, fraction absorbed and uh, oral bioavailability of close to 100%. Uh, we can go into the uh, graph for the um, uh, compound and let's look at the uh, regional absorption as we go down the GI tract. Um, most of the compounds absorbed in the duodenum and the jejunum and then decreases slowly until it gets up to the uh, cecum where it increases up to 12.5%. Uh, if we look at the absorption and dissolution plots, uh, uh, the uh, systemic circulation and the uh, amount in the portal vein cover up the uh, amount absorbed. So uh, the blue or the cyan line is the amount uh, absorbed. The red line is the amount dissolved. And you see what uh, that the compound uh, is dissolved very quickly. Uh, this all occurs in the stomach where you have a lower pH and uh, so you have fairly high solubility and so you have quick dissolution uh, in the stomach. And then as the compound starts to work its way down the GI tract, the pH changes and uh, increases uh, which causes less ions and therefore the solubility decreases. 
and the compound precipitates. Here we see the sink effect of meconazole. It is a class 2 BCS compound and as a little bit of the compound dissolves it is quickly absorbed therefore allowing more of the compound to dissolve. And notice that as I move my cursor along these lines that uh, these values over here change. So the x value is the time and the y value is the uh, amount or the mass, the mass axis. And so if we look up at the, the amount um, absorbed, uh, we see that uh, around 5, you're getting up to 500 milligrams uh, of the dose absorbed here. Now let's go back into uh, the compound tab and let's change the um, uh, permeability down to 1.0. Uh, uh, that reduces the absorption number, but still, again, uh, green. Go into the simulation tab uh, and click on the start button to start the simulation. Uh, now, if we look at the fraction absorbed, it's only 81% here, and that's due to the lower permeability uh, of the compound. And if we look at the graph again, uh, you see that now with a very low permeability, uh, the, com the amount dissolved dips down all the way to uh, 100 milligrams and then slowly rises as the compound uh, is absorbed. What's happening here is kind of the opposite of the sink effect. In the first example, when you, um, uh, as it worked its way down the GI tract, a little bit of it would absorb, and because you have such high permeability of the compound, uh, that would kind of clear the dissolved uh, portion of the compound. Uh, uh, it would be absorbed. This would allow more of the compound to, to um, uh, be dissolved. So this is called a sink effect uh, uh, for the compound. And the sink effect is dramatically decreased now that we've decreased the uh, uh, permeability of the compound down to one. So now let's go in back in here and let's look at the solubility. Let's increase the solubility by an order of magnitude, increase that up to 10. Uh, now the dose number um, uh, uh, decreases a little bit uh, for this compound. If we go into the simulation and start that, uh, after 24 hours you'll see that now we have almost 100% uh, fraction absorbed here. And if we take a look at this graph here, uh, now the compound is, uh, as it moves down the GI tract, uh, it, it does recrystallize, uh, but, and, and, and we've also got the low permeability here, uh, but it doesn't dip down quite as much because we've increased the solubility uh, of the compound. And so it doesn't go down all the way to 100, and then it comes back up, or the amount dissolved uh, eventually comes back up. This slide uh, summarizes what we've discussed in this video. Uh, we took a look at meconazole, which is a weekly basic compound and uh, has fairly low solubility. It is a BCS class 2 compound, low solubility, high permeability. Uh, solubility increases with increasing ionization of the compound, whereas log D decreases with increasing ionization of the compound. Solubility is related to uh, dissolution of the compound, and log D is related to the absorption of the compound. Uh, we also discussed the solubility factor. That's the ratio of the solubility of the ionized form to the unionized form of the compound. Uh, we also looked at absorption scale factors. Uh, this allows uh, different absorption to occur in each uh, of the GI uh, compartments. Meconazole uh, will quickly dissolve in the stomach. Uh, that's because the pH is low and there's a very high fraction of ionized groups. And remember that the solubility increases with ionization. Then as the drug transits uh, into the duodenum, the pH goes up and the compound precipitates uh, due to the lower solubility at the higher pH. We saw the sink effect uh, that the dissolved compound, uh, if it's quickly absorbed due to the high PEF, and then uh, this allows more of the compound to dissolve. So eventually it uh, all dissolves uh, in the GI tract and is absorbed uh, into the portal vein and then to, into systemic circulation. Uh, thank you for watching this video. This is Mike Lawless, and if you have any questions, please send me an email at mlawless at simulationsplus.com. Thank you.